This is a free sample of the book, Never Ghosted Again, The Art of Being Irresistible, by Cairo Copeland. The first half of this book is posted right here on YouTube, free for everyone to listen to. If you like this content and want to hear or read the rest or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash ghosted. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and audible at reinventideal.com slash ghosted. Intro. This is often the part where the author tells you his life story about how he was horrible with women and somehow became amazing with that. You will find none of that here. Such introductions were quite annoying to the author, as he was researching this book by reading others of the sort. As a result, the author has vowed not to waste any of your time. How biographical introductions help the reader is a mystery. You are listening to this book because you want real, practical tactics on how to improve this area of your life. And you will get them. This is also often the part where you get all these promises of a better life that the book was written to give you. Here, you'll actually find the opposite. However, the title of this book suggests a certain problem that must be plaguing you. It is only pages away from being solved, getting ghosted on. Must be. Why else would you have picked this book if it wasn't a problem in your life that was hitting a deep nerve? Maybe it happened a few times, or maybe it happens too often. But let's see if the following story sounds familiar to you. Jonah had his shit together. He had a respectable career, designations that awarded him letters after his name, a nice car, his own house, money in the bank, good conversation skills, and a somewhat above average body, and could even play guitar. No previous marriages or kids from them, the ideal man so to speak, that girls would be proud to bring home to their parents, but they never did. He would go on dates with girls he met online, things seemed to kick off well at first, especially with Megan. They had sent detailed messages back and forth to each other online, sent texts to each other all throughout the day, even did two or three Skype dates. When her video feed first appeared on his computer, he breathed a sigh of relief. She was, in fact, as beautiful as her profile pictures advertised. Finally, he was able to get her on a date. The restaurant was cozy, the food delicious, and the girl in her dress was ravishing. Jonah and Megan had a stimulating conversation on a wide range of topics from their interests to life plans to their feelings about relationships, and the date ended with a slow kissing session. His offer for another was accepted, and it went well as the first, or even better seeing as how the kissing session went longer. He became less and less afraid of hiding who he really was with her, and started to show the real him. To a certain degree, she returned the favor. As more days passed with the constant texting continuing, even three-hour phone calls into the night, he became more comfortable around her and opened up his soul, showing his true intentions of seeking unconditional love. It was in an honest, vulnerable, yet well-worded way. Megan responded in kind, with acceptance and affection. Here, Jonah believed he finally found what he was looking for. But as time continued, the relationship did not grow deeper. Rather, it felt like the opposite was occurring. It felt shallower by the day, as her replies to his texts took longer and were often shorter. Some nights, his phone calls went unanswered, and worse, she made other plans for Friday, their ritualistic date night. Feeling the pressure, Jonah believed that he had to do something about this and do it fast. He learned how to play her favorite song on the guitar and was ready to use it for their next date. He made other arrangements like a reservation at a restaurant he knew she'd love and even worked things out with the staff there for him to have a moment on the stage with his guitar to sing to her. This will melt her heart for sure, he thought. By Friday, she should be eager to see him, he believed, but it was cancelled again, this time by her claim of illness. Upset and hurt, as he had to call in to cancel the reservation, but biting back on his emotions, he sulked for the rest of the weekend. It was ruined for sure. More so when he saw on social media pictures she was tagged in of her going out with her girlfriends, and no sign of sickness. Jonah had wanted to release so many pent-up thoughts. Why is this happening to me? Why doesn't she want to see me? I'm a good guy, for God's sakes. What's wrong with her? But continued to bite his tongue. 
he felt he had been biting down his tongue for so much of his life, at work, all throughout school, and around these delicate dating situations, that he may be permanently damaging his taste buds that would allow future happiness. He texted her again, just to see how she was feeling. No answer. He waited a day. Still no answer. He texted her again. No answer. A day later, he went on social media and sent her a message there. After a day, there was still no answer. He did his best to sleep with the hope that he'd wake up to her message and feel wanted again. But the fear that he was being ignored and undesirable kept him up all night. The next day, he turned to social media but couldn't find her profile. It's as if she disappeared off the network by disabling her profile. Or she had blocked him. He made one last effort to call her. Straight to voicemail. Ghosted. It is here that Jonah experienced what is truly the opposite of love, and it is not hate, but rather indifference. It is here that he experienced a form of rejection that is, in fact, personal. Many times he could have overlooked rejection from the dating sites because how could they be personally attacking him when they didn't know him? But Megan did know him. When someone you believe cares about you disappears from contact without any explanation at all, no phone calls or text messages, you've been ghosted. And this practice is becoming far too common. 50% of both men and women have experienced it, and that same percentage admits to doing it. While the practice has become common, the emotional effects have become no less devastating. And to those whose self-esteem is already in jeopardy, the effects are lethal. Why has it become common? In today's world of smartphones, social media, Netflix, Xbox, and Pornhub, the world has nearly cured boredom. There never has to be a dull moment in life. Rarely is anyone alone with their thoughts, as their smartphone is always with them to let them know how envious they are of their friends' lives through Facebook feeds. When you want to be entertained, both TV shows and video games are neurologically engineered to keep you watching and playing, thus able to avoid dealing with problems in life or discomfort. If there's something you like looking at, it's only a few keystrokes away. Discomfort is a feeling that the world has almost forgotten how to deal with, because everything in today's world is made to make one comfortable. Ghosting allows one to avoid emotional discomfort because the resolve needed to reject or break it off with someone is often difficult to summon. Guilt arises when you see the hurt your words and actions cause others. When you ghost, you don't have to see it. But the hurt doesn't go away for the recipient. Sometimes when breaking it off is done in person, there is pushback from the other party, or pleas not to end what you had going on. And sometimes this pushback is convincing, or it inspires you to amp it up a notch, making you act in a way that is more seemingly cruel, for which further guilt will be inspired by later. As it has been done once, it becomes easier for the same person to do it again. The more it happens, either to the victim of it or their friends, the more this victim feels justified to do it as well. And now it's become a world of ghosting and giving not a shit about the emotional well-being of others. How much longer will it be before this whole world melts down like an ice cube on a stovetop with how cruel we've become to each other? The hope of the author is that no man reading this will ever experience it again, and that maybe one day it will be a forgotten practice. This book will shoot straight with you. The journey to improve your lot in life with women is an arduous one, to say the least. In this book, you will be presented with very uncomfortable truths and outrageous claims. But once you are exposed to them, much of your past experiences and the world around you will finally start to make sense. It is important to note that what you are about to read is not for the newbie. Not for the timid youngster just testing the waters, nor the recently dumped hoping to get his ex-girlfriend back. The shocks you are about to absorb are intense and perhaps can only be handled by the advanced. There is only one type of man that will truly be able to appreciate the information presented here. He who genuinely loves women. That may seem like the lowest bar, but it is higher than what first meets the mental eye. The truth is that in this journey, you will feel more disrespected than you've ever felt before. You will be mistreated far more than you ever thought possible. You will see the ugliest side of humanity and learn that the opposite of love is not hate, but indifference. And that is the most painful experience on earth. Only he who has a genuine love for women will be able to experience that pain and go back after what triggered it. This is for the guy that sees the true ugliness behind the glamour and beauty of the love he seeks and fears becoming the jaded, bitter man that is destined to spend the rest of his life alone. Fears aligning himself with the likes of MGTOW, 
which stands for men going their own way, and fears being governed by resentment. Fears becoming the creepy old man that merely stares at beauty, believing that's all he has the power to do. The genuine love overpowers the fear. This is for the guy that has fallen hard on the floor of his room, crying his heart out, and contemplating suicide, while the woman he adored with all his capacity to love flaked on him, ghosted on him, all the while she received adoration effortlessly from an endless supply of douchebags at her beck and call. This is for the guy that has done everything the women he loved ever asked him to do, yet they still denied him the only things he ever asked for. Reciprocation. A recognition of his basic humanity. Acknowledgement of his long-suffering heart. Empathy for its agony. And above all, unconditional love. In today's world, he catches himself asking, when did that become too much to ask for? This is to help that guy become a man. An irresistible man. In this era of ghosting, this is the kind of man that is so good she would never dream of ghosting on him. But she will do quite the opposite, which is ironically, haunt him and do so frequently. This book is the art of being irresistible. Throughout the chapters that follow, the author uses the noun guy to describe the untrained male who's down on his luck with women, and then uses the noun man to describe the irresistible ideal. Pay attention to such usage, as the distinction is more important than mere grammatic device. The author understands very well the pain you are in, and in the pages that follow, he makes no cold-hearted comments intentionally to shit on your pain. Despite the harshness of the truths presented, they are here for your benefit and future happiness. He dreams of a world where men understand women, where men can effortlessly attain the relationships they desire, and have a lot more safe, consensual sex. It is quite a moral calling, because such a world is a better world for all its inhabitants. To get the most out of this book, you must remember that while the cause of your pain stems from your desire for women, it is never the fault of the women. Do not grow bitter and resentful toward them. They do not consciously inflict it. An understanding of female nature will make this clear. That is why great emphasis is given on genuinely loving women. The trials and tests you will face in this journey can only be endured by having a genuine love of them. That is the only source of strength that will sufficiently fuel you across the miles of progress. This is to reinvent the wheel, or better yet, reinvent ideal. Never ghost it again. Thank you for listening to this free sample of the book, Never Ghost It Again, The Art of Being Irresistible, by Cairo Copeland. If you enjoyed it and want to hear or read the rest, or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash ghosted. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and Audible at reinventideal.com slash ghosted.